For almost 40 years, Tomorrow's World was the place to get an early glimpse at tech innovations of the future and mad inventions like flying trousers, which never saw the light of day. Fitting with its vibe of educational yet fun, like when your teacher let you quietly do a word search for half an hour at the end of term, with the chance of winning a mini Mars bar. Every Christmas, Tomorrow's World held a special quiz episode. There were seven in total, from 86 to 92, and I sat through four of them, all hosted by Howard Stableford in a succession of lovely Christmas jumpers. We're starting at 1987, with no sleigh bells or superimposed snow, and using the regular old intro. Just piss straight into the crib and be done with it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Tomorrow's World Christmas Quiz. You just wouldn't believe some of the things that inventors come up with. It's basically Call My Bluff. They show a strange object, with three explanations of what it's for. It's the audience plus a team of celebrities guess who's telling the truth. Now this one's an easy one, of course, just as it appears. Just as it appears, eh? <laughs> See? Like you bet, the audience have got voting buttons, while our panel of celebrities, led by Christopher Timothy off the VET programme, demonstrates how telly filled its cast before they could call up Love Island contestants or influencers with famous parents. On my immediate left, ladies and gentlemen, is Leslie Reese, the professor of endocrinology at Barts. Leslie Reese, ladies and gentlemen. And on my far left, John Albury, who is professor of physical chemistry at Imperial College. Albury, former Rear of the Year. And all that then remains is for you to pour in the concrete and impress the neighbours to death. A good try, Peter. But in fact, this is the very latest in cake icing aids. That this makes icing a piece of cake. Not bad. Excitingly, star guests also join in the fun. It could be anyone, like, like Colin Chantbury, head of anesthesiology at Chichester Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Newsreader. Still, nice of Moira to come in festive fancy dress. But this is really great for exercising your leg muscles, your thighs and your calves. I don't know. I know that you were shaking your head at Moira. Do you not believe it's that? <laughs> no, I don't. I think you need pads for your backside. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, well, yeah, the cake icing stand has got it with 54%. Well, let's reveal it. Will the person who was telling the truth please step forward? <laughs> <laughs> but here's a familiar face and beak. When people said tomorrow's world predicted the future, they weren't kidding. And you could fall down to earth with a wallop. Yep. <laughs> I'll just show it to you viewers. It's very. I'll show it. I'll stop it. I'll show it. It's very. It's... and the flag falls down. That's down. <laughs> it's a pretty sensible move in a room full of eminent scientists to keep Rod safely secured in the basket. But thank you very much, Rod Holoninu! <laughs> Father Christmas brings presents for the panel and calm down, you animal. Wouldn't want to play past the parcel with the professor. You know when the doorbell goes and it's the annoying cousin everyone hates, turning up to ruin Christmas Day with his pratting about. Ta -da! <laughs> Hello. Please don't look so bored. It's me. Right. At the time, Cheggers was Tomorrow's World host Maggie Philbin's husband with their baby on the way. 
You can use this hand to do anything you like with. You can learn to play the piano or uh, have something to eat, you say. And we also have something to drink as well. <laughs> but this is a contest, and the audience get very excited by a correct answer. I would say just a guess, it looks like a bicycle chain cleaner. A bicycle chain cleaner? <laughs> yeah. Let's find out. Well, I was curious how this one worked, so I tried it myself. Oh, to care that much about anything. Ten points to the audience. <laughs> See if you can work out which show the next guest is from. A man well ahead of his time, by about two centuries, he's never been phased, but has a stunning phaser. From the far reaches of the Andromeda galaxy, our coordinates are fixed, so please beam him in. Emmerdale Farm? Lieutenant Sulu. As it's actually Sulu, in character, Tomorrow's World is now Star Trek canon, and ergo, so are Rod Hull and Chegwin. Yes, live long and prosper, Sulu. So it's Howard's intros were a masterclass in subtlety. See if you can guess whose lie it is anyway, because have I got news for you? It's Paul Merton! <laughs> Though she's referring to an electrician strike, 87 sign-off feels like picking up a transmission from an alternate reality, broadcasting in the midst of total societal collapse. And that is about it from Tomorrow's World for this year. We will be back in the new year, by which time, hopefully, some kind of order will have been restored. At least under the credits we get what we've all been waiting for. The 88, 89 and 91 editions all blur into one. They double down on in-character sci-fi guests with celebrity Captain Sylvester McCoy in the full gear. First things first, Sylvester McCoy, oh, Doctor yeah. Who. You, you can't erasing? leave that thing there. Ah, yes, well, home James. <laughs> but dubbing the TARDIS noise on after, Everyone keeps talking and gets drowned out. Would you introduce us to him? Yes, uh, this is uh, Nancy Lane, who's head of electron microscopy. You what, mate? The captains really are nerds' paradise. Galactic hitchhiker, Douglas Adams. In case you didn't want to sleep tonight, here's what Douglas brought in. Well, I've brought in a friend from Christmas past to pose our question. He's not Father Christmas, he's actually one of the earliest known life-size automata. A robot monk, over a hundred years old. In fact, he did collect money, uh, in fact, by running up and down the aisle of a church in Italy. But then there was an allegation, and he was quietly sent off to another parish. This comes from Shanghai University in China, and it's to make it easier to milk a mare. Yeah, they do thrash about so. Like everything on telly then, Tomorrow's World is another showcase for pent-up Brits, their pallid bodies simmering with centuries of unspoken sexual longing, and forced to release plaintive cries for help through innuendo. And what happens then is that this little thing spins up joyfully to greet you. Half the inventions are phallic, look like a cock could go in them, or have some possible rude function. It's vital for farmers to know when their cows come into season, and uh, then the farmer, as you can see, has an instant indication <laughs> that it's time to call the vet. Yes, how very tasteful. 
And Judith's not looking too bad either. There's stifled audience giggles at anything that's vaguely cylindrical or with any kind of sudden movement. It's hinged. Get yourself a love honey sub. And it does its job remarkably quickly. And without one of these, he could be in for a very messy job. Mmm. Intriguing, that one. I had to play with that myself. You know things are out of hand when George Takei is the only one not giving double entendres. And with two little dangling balls. And now, his passage is all clear. He's got two knobs at one end. <laughs> because this applies the perfect grip to pull off the perfect fruit. A patented didgeridoo support. It is, is it? And the didgeridoo support is steaming into the lead. Well, it looks decidedly like the didgeridoo support. Very clear, the audience and the panel agreeing it's a didgeridoo support. Stop saying didgeridoo support. It's a simple and effective way for doctors to see if newborn babies are sucking properly. Now, I'm afraid we caught the little blighter smiling at James Corden's carpool karaoke and can confirm that your baby properly sucks. Let's break for a moment to visit another retro tech series with the Christmas special of early BBC computer show Micro Live from 1985. Lovely bit of tinsel round the frame. That's how it's done. Though the disquieting theme must have induced serious techno fear in its viewers. They open with a section about an amendment to copyright law, which now covers the copying of tapes. Back in the day, a double deck recorder and your friend's Treasure Island Dizzy was the original bit torrent. Don't copy! Don't copy that floppy! But young children who are caught copying software are risking more than they think. Not only would their parents be liable to pay any fines, but as barrister Emlyn Williams points out, The penalties now available against them seem to be excessive, for there can, and indeed will, be cases where copying in contravention of the new provision may ground an order putting a child into the care of a local authority. Imagine being torn from your family and put in a kid's home, all because you made a copy of Fat Worm Blows a Sparky. For modern gamers with broadband caps or bad download speeds, some problems are timeless. Why, oh why, do companies not make at least all their new software available on disk? Nothing makes you feel like Methuselah's classmate than a TV show demonstrating the amazing new ability to paste a paragraph of text. I'm going to move it to make it number one. No, don't like it there. So I'll change it. In fact, you're I hate that sentence altogether. I shall now delete it. <laughs> you see? Wonderful. But you, magic. you're experimenting, aren't you? Micro Live even has its own news desk, focused on computer stuff. The problem is that three-inch discs are only made by two companies, Maxell and Panasonic. Reporting from Silicon Valley for Micro Live, I'm Wendy Wood. Most interesting story is a text adventure game you played down the phone with your voice. Instructions are given to the 20 megabyte microcomputer in BT's Martlesham Research Centre by speaking down the phone. Repeat after me. North. North. Increase penis size. Increase penis size. Plus there's an overly complex competition. Therefore we had to bring in a tiebreaker and for that we wanted the competitors who sold the first part to write a telegram in 24 words using every letter of the alphabet in the correct order, bar two, from or to somebody with a hatred of or a love of computers. A bloke from Punch magazine pissed off with adventure games. But this is all, I mean, what is this? The legend, the nine tasks of the unnamed one. You have to find somebody called Aravor Shape Changer. <laughs> what on earth has that got to do with anything? <laughs> and Christmas shopping ideas for the family spot. The spec drum unit for the Spectrum computer, uh, very good value at £30, and they've just released a new kit of Latin American sound. 
This you just load into the computer, the BBC, and then you can t type a file, a word process file, and it will actually speak it out of the loudspeaker without having any special chip in the machine. Yeah, because a demon says it for you. We'll see what you think. There's that tongue twister that we used earlier in the scene. <laughs> oh, thank you kindly. Well, I for the rubbish gamer in your family, how about a dial you can turn to physically slow the game down? Yes, I suppose so, but Max seems to be doing rather well. He's got a high score of 101 credits on Elite. <laughs> Starting with 100, of course. <laughs> so you can play it at normal speed, but you can actually oh. crank the speed down. Oh, I think he's been zapped. Come on, own up. I don't need that. I've got loads of wins in Fortnite. I am husband material. I am. Speaking of old gaming, in the 91 Tomorrow's World, Annika Rice demonstrates early VR. And you'll find that you've now entered the world of virtual reality. And you can look around by turning your head. And if you look down, you can even see your own virtually real feet. You can also cast a spell on your opponent using that joystick too. What you're witnessing is the birth of eSports. Wait for the whistle and the game will commence. Three, two, one. <laughs> Off you go. There's Annika, a good zap from Annika and from James there. Oh yes, they've both completely annihilated oh. each other. <laughs> And they're shooting willy-nilly now. They've missed each other entirely, but... Uh, I... Annika... Oh, yes, a great shot! Yay! Who's it going to be? James... It's a great shot! It's a great Ooh. shot! And that's the end of the game! There's a couple of cameos of note to comedy fans, with the great hinge and bracket. <laughs> and another mystery Santa immediately recognisable from his voice. Oh, 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 you, man. Another fucking dildo. Yes, you go to the top of the class and jump off. Stone cold dead in your market. Stone cold dead in your market. Ta-da! And for people whose idea of a laugh is wondering, what would Tony Blair say about all this? This man is a psychiatrist's nightmare. <laughs> yes, it's Roy Brunner! Psychiatrist nightmare, comedy fans nightmare. My fellow, uh, my fellow suckers. <laughs> well, as you know, I'm shortly to join the Antiques Roadshow <laughs> as an exhibit. Whip, crack away, whip, crack away. <laughs> Find someone who looks at you like this man looks at Sybil Roscoe. I wish you were my wife. Because all you have to do is make a hole in the snow and once it's sitting there I think we know exactly what you're gonna do you dirty devil one thing you have to give them is you can never guess who might walk out next ladies and gentlemen please welcome our first guest Eartha Kitt <laughs> Love how she just became Catwoman forever. Like if Anthony Hopkins was still biting people on the red carpet. Wow. I was right. Ta -da. <laughs> There's also Daniels. Of course you are, dear heart. It is a memory metal bra. <laughs> and what a moment for the ages this is. David Essex with an invisible drum kit. But I, I bet you've never seen a drum kit like this before. No, and I can't see it now. I mean, it's invisible. What I'm actually doing is I'm actually playing through invisible infrared beams with the stick. Somewhere should be a tom -tom. Okay, this is, this is the sound for the panel. Ready, panel? 
<laughs> it is a Christmas sound. It does have some connection with it's Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> it is the sound of reindeers rutting. Or perhaps. British envoy Frank Bruno. Are you from America, ma'am? Yes, I am. Oh, nice to meet you. You have a nice day, y'all. <laughs> Frank's mystery object turns out to be a prehistoric connect. Cheers, hello Hi. there, you're right, yeah? Nice. Show us what you have to do then. I'm the small one. That's your husband, yeah. Take that. <laughs> Take that, you beast. That's your husband. That's your husband there. Take that to you. That's it. That's your husband there. Go on, give him a punch. There's even a couple of lads from the West End adaptation of Thunderbirds. But first, I need to find Parker. Parker? Uh, uh, here I have Virgil. Ah, all cars now have to have their exhaust gases tested as part of the MOT. Then they take the sample back to the lab for an ac accurate analysis. <laughs> That's brilliant. Can I have a huff on that when you're done? <laughs> and for those who are into this sort of thing, Derek Jameson in bondage. Evening, evening. What a load of rubbish. The left one pointing outwards, the other one inwards. And the idea is, it gives you the perfect stance and position. But year on year, the highlight is the regular folk in the audience. I reckon it's an email alarm. <laughs> <laughs> they are indeed. It is a vote to protect us. It's at least five days of the Or possibly something to uh, scratch the hair. Know, to uh, make it uh, grow again. I think it's got to be the wax stabiliser. It was some sort of pump. <laughs> now I go for the sheep. You go for the sheep? Yeah. So we're sort of, you know, waning towards the sheep. Oh, well, it's got to be the... the uh... oh, I've forgotten what they are now. <laughs> <laughs> but never let anyone tell you people who do science can't be cool. Now I imagine that I'm cruising along the motorway listening to some lovely music. Peace, man. I'm going to point a finger at Peter. Do a little, little bit in here. Come on. Hey, oh! <laughs> now, uh, squeeze those fingers. There's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> Two delightful parcels. Let's see what's in the first one. A rigid plastic strap. All right, that's quite enough of that. And there's a bulldog clip, too. <laughs> Probably for your nipple. This... Is a handbell. I knew it was a bell. It was you lot on YouTube putting dirty things in my mind. The gimbals mean the candle always stays upright and doesn't spill wax onto the chorister's hymn book. Nor the bishop's bare chest. Although he could wear one of these. Oh God, let's just get out of here before we all end up in horny jail. Now, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> Take it away. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Happy Christmas. Wonderful. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Oh. 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 Oh.